So good evening to one and all present here. We are now at the third session of day one. I welcome you all to the CIT Quantum Hackathon workshop series as part of this uh, Qiskit Fall Fest. It is sponsored by IBM Quantum and Qiskit. I take this privilege to welcome Dr. Raghavendra V, a research scholar in the field of computational chemistry. He has worked on ten density functional theory for ground and excited states of the molecules and also he has worked on molecular design for organic solar cells. He uses quantum chemical software programs to run simulations of designed molecules and verify if the molecular properties such as electron density, frontier molecule orbital, free energy for electron release etc. are met for the applications in DSSC, which is dye-sensitized solar cells. And also, Sah has worked as an Amazon employee for uh, three years. So now uh, we are ready and waiting for you to take the session on quantum gates. Hi, Danny. Thank you. Hi, Thank sir. you for the kind introduction. Yes, sir. It is good. my pleasure. Good evening, everybody. So, Today, I'll uh, discuss briefly about uh, the quantum gates. Uh, what are quantum gates? Uh, what is the what is the requirement to be a quantum gate? And uh, what, what are uh, basically two different kinds of quantum gates that we come across in general and all that. So, uh, as you know, I have just uh, written it down so that uh, it, it, it's not a blockhead when we try to discuss live so i'll just run through this so any qu quantum system uh, is characterized by a wave function as you already know so psi is a, a representation of a wave function and it's dependent on the coordinates and also the time so usually uh, it is written as psi of x comma t uh, where psi is the wave function x is the coordinates of the particle uh, quantum particle or quantum object and then t is the time so this is time time dependent uh, wave function and time dependent quantum system and in general uh, let's uh, keep the time uh, away for, for us uh, for, away for now and so in general uh, for a qubit system psi the wave function of the qubit and uh, in quantum computing we work with the wave function of the qubit or the state of the quantum state of the qubit and that can be written as alpha naught plus beta 1. This 0, uh, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, you have gone through uh, ket notation. Please let me know if the, uh, you've gone through the ket notation. I think uh, in the last session, ket notation was introduced to you, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so the alpha, alpha 0 plus beta 1 uh, is the general way of expressing uh, qubit. And uh, so the probability for finding uh, the qubit, state, qubit in zeroth state is uh, given by alpha uh, modulus alpha square. And then uh, probability for finding uh, one is given by alpha, uh, modulus beta squared. And their probability uh, need to sum up to one. That is the normalization condition. So now, in general, uh, in uh, quantum mechanics, mm -hmm most of the cases that we deal with uh, the wave function or the quantum particle or the system uh, should uh, they evolve unitarily which means uh, the norm or the length of this uh, vector these wave functions are uh, represented by the vectors uh, in the Hilbert space and these vectors uh, the length or the norm uh, are preserved which means uh, they evolve unitarily so now in quantum computing this we uh, we try to manipulate or rotate these qubit states which are quantum states again and they are going to evolve unitarily and we are going to use unitary operators in order to do this manipulation or computation on these qubit states so we have a qubit and qubit is a quantum state and quantum state has probabilistic uh, interpretations such as alpha zero plus beta one and their coefficients are normalized and now uh, we are going to use these qubits to do the computation 
and this computation is basically a sequence of rotation or transformation linear transformation of this high dimensional wave function which is again qubit on a high dimensional space and this can be achieved by doing unitary operations uh, using unitary matrices on this qubit states because these quantum systems they evolve unitarily given a time this quantum system uh, goes from configuration a to configuration b the process goes unitarily therefore we need to have uh, unitary matrices or operators and we already have that uh, and these are called these are what called quantum gates So this matrix operation can be used to perform rotation of qubit states, psi of x comma t. Uh, let's drop the t for now. And these matrices are unitary in nature. And the definition for unitary goes like this. U dagger, uh, which is the conjugate transpose. I'll be discussing about that shortly. And then is equal to the uh, in inverse of the its own matrix, which is like the, the conjugate transpose of a matrix has to be its own inverse which means uh, multiplying u dagger with u inverse gives us identity matrix or the other ways uh, in the other order multiplying the inverse of a matrix with its conjugate transpose gives us the identity matrix this again uh, this ensures the uh, norm being preserved when the computation is being done or the system quantum system evolves and now just briefly introduce the expression for qubit state so psi is equal to alpha naught plus beta one. This can also be written using a, a trigonometric uh, 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 method on block sphere, which is given by cos theta by two theta plus e power i phi sine theta by two one. Here theta is the polar angle, and uh, it uh, spans from z it spans from between zero to pi, and phi is the azimuthal angle, which can span from zero to two pi, and uh, these are the expressions for finding, uh, finding the probability of uh, occurrence of zero and one state. Now, this is the block sphere representation of the qubit state. So now we see that there are uh, the qubit can occur in a zeroth state. Q qubit can occur in zeroth state and also sorry, in the in the one state. And now. Uh, Initially, the qubit usually occurs in the zero state. And for doing the computation, we are going to do manipulation on these states, which means we are going to rotate this state from here to here or here to here or we somewhere. Are seeing second slide. I'm sorry to disturb, sir, but uh, we are seeing on the screen second slide only. Okay. Uh, you're not seeing the block sphere, the big block sphere? Now, no? now we are seeing this. Now you're seeing. Yes, sir, it is visible, visible now. now. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So here uh, we start with uh, usually start with zero state, and uh, from here we go to uh, we, we like uh, go to any 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 kind of state on this uh, block sphere, which means uh, we use unitary operations to carry out this uh, uh, computation, and uh, these uh, states they correspond to uh, they they of course are wave functions. So they, they correspond to uh, something called Ansatz or wave function uh, when it comes to quantum algorithms. And these uh, states have to be uh, minimized or something uh, or maximized to uh, get the job done when we use the quantum algorithms. So therefore, it is uh, of uh, very high importance to have an idea of this. But of course, this is a, a representation for a single qubit uh, in the problems that we uh, work with in real life or usually more than one qubit so but this gives an idea of like where the state can lie it can be here it can be here so imagine like it's on the surface of the block sphere so it can be anywhere and we can go to any any of these we, we, with the proper uh, uh, manipulation we can go to any of the uh, there are infinite such states so we can go to infinite such states so this is zero state one state and this is 0 plus 1 by root 2. This is 0 minus 1 by root 2. 
and this is 0 plus i 1 by root 2 this is 0 minus 1 i 1 by root 2 so this is about the qubit states now coming back to the unitary thing so we just wanted to i just wanted to show how the unitary uh, operator uh, let's find uh, let's see if a unitary operator is really a unitary operator how, how do we do that so we have a unitary matrix for uh, uh, u we have a matrix u which goes by 0 minus i i0 and uh, so we can write it in the form of 0 plus 0 i 0 minus i 0 plus i plus 0 plus 0 i so u dagger uh, we need u dagger right to confirm whether it's unitary or not because we are going to evaluate this uh, relationship sir excuse me yes please sir uh the screen is still on the fourth slide now oh okay i think uh we are seeing the now non-presentation view sir now is it fine okay. uh it is moving now sir but uh, it is struck after you will go to the next screen sir. okay okay what can I we go to this uh, slide stop moment? sharing and i'll reshare Yes, sir. Slide some more. Can you see? We are still at the fifth slide, sir. Okay. Unitary. What I'll do is, uh, yeah, I'll stop sharing and I'll. Uh... Yeah, okay, sir. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. It is. Thank you. So now uh, this is the matrix that we consider, and we want to see whether this uh, is a unitary matrix. And how do we do that? Um, just rewriting this uh, in terms of uh, 0, 0 plus i, 0 minus i, 0 plus i, 0 plus 0 i. And then u dagger, because we are going to evaluate this uh, relationship to see whether this given matrix is unitary or not. So initially, we take a uh, um, conjugate, complex conjugate. So which means our uh, negative, uh, negative, uh, positive or negative of i is uh, changed into uh, negative or positive of i. So now we make it minus i. And then here uh, we have negative. So make it plus i. And then plus into minus. And then uh, again, this is, this is supposed to be minus. So we obtain, uh, uh, like, uh, after uh, doing the algebra, we'll get this. 0 minus i i 0 so now we want to evaluate uh, multiplying uh, we'll multiply these two matrix and see if we what is the result and if we do the matrix multiplication these are two by two matrix and this is a two by two matrix so we are going to have two by two matrix after that matrix multiplication so we see here 0 into 0 and uh, minus i into i so, uh, similarly 0 into minus i and minus i into 0 likewise for the the bottom ones so at the end we get uh, minus i squared minus i squared one zero zero one which is equal to identity so by definition uh, so now we have arrived at the proper definition of unitary matrix so this can be qualified as a unitary matrix there are so many such matrices which we'll be using to do the computation this is one of such matrix we'll have we'll come across this matrix later and then so what is the point of uh, doing all this computation so we need to measure uh, at the end of the if we, if we need to uh, extract answer we need to do the measurement at the end of the uh, circuit so what we do is uh, I, i'll just show uh, an idea of how measurement works this is one of the uh, qubit states uh, states of a qubit if you see this is psi and uh, one by root three uh, of uh, uh, zero plus root two of one so this is what we have this is much similar to alpha 0 plus beta 1. And we need to see what is the probability of finding 0 and 1. Uh, because uh, we just want to know uh, at the end of the measurement, how, what will the state, how will the state turn out to be? As you know, quantum mechanics is probabilistic in nature. We cannot say in certain that uh, it's going to be 0 or it's going to be 1. We can only say that the probability of finding 0 is so-and-so and probability of finding so, uh, 1 is so-and-so. So in order to do that, 
we are going to uh, find the probability for zero now and we do this uh, kind of uh, measurement this is a projection of zero on the uh, side state so which is like zero uh, psi uh, squared so this is much like uh, the, this, this comes from the bonds rule where the amplitude has to be squared so now we have this uh, this is the we'll try to do the uh, computation here so zero on by root three um, zero root two one and we have the square here and we'll try to bring these two together and now this as you know inner product of zero with zero is always one so inner product of one to one is always one and inner product of um, zero one or one zero is uh, zero so i have uh, made the inner product so this is where it is so in case uh, i just wanted to show the inner product uh, slide so if you see here uh, this is zero get zero and it goes by one zero and bra bra version of uh, this zero is one zero similarly for one which is given as get one is zero one and bra version of this is zero one and if we take the inner product which is uh, defined by uh, bra get now we have one into two uh, matrix mul multiplied with this one into zero matrix so two by two so this can be done and the end result will be one into one which is a scalar one and therefore one into one plus zero into one, uh, zero into zero will give us one which means uh, the the inner product of zero onto zero um, a quantum system projected onto itself will give us one which means the probability of finding the quantum system will be one it will always be remain one so that is this is the guarantee and similarly for uh, uh, bra one, um, bracket one we have zero one and zero one here if we do the uh, uh, algebra we'll get that uh, it uh, again it uh, turns out to be one which means uh, one projected down to itself will remain uh, will give us certainly uh, will give us some state which is uh, which is certainly the probability is one so now if we try to do the same uh, projection with uh, different states so zero projected down to one and then we have this matrix and then if we do the uh, computation here we'll get uh, it turns out to be zero it's like orthogonally orthogonality so it's like a uh, scalar dot product that we come across in usual vectors and uh, when uh, it's a different uh, vector then there is they, they remain if they remain orthogonal then their uh, inner product the vector scalar product is zero so much similar to that so now and um, we'll go back to here and something similar we will do here and therefore now we after doing this uh, we're bringing in the uh, get st uh, bra state into the into the size state here we see that uh, zero zero this is going to be one we know that this is one and this is going to be zero so now with this whole term vanishes and we get one by root three uh, whole square which is one by three similarly for uh, let's see if we can find something similar for uh, get one so we have do the same uh, we go by the same formula and we get uh, if we do the computation we get like a bracket of one zero which is which uh, which means their inner product is going to be zero so this term will vanish and we'll have uh, inner product of one against one which is like the projection of one onto uh, itself which means the root of two by three the whole square which is equal to two by three so as per our condition the state has to be normalized so let us see if we get uh, uh, probability of finding zero and probability of finding get one sum of two uh, one so it's uh, evident from our calculations that this is a normalized state so this kind of measurement is what done uh, at the in, in, at the end of uh, uh, an algorithm to obtain a result so uh, this is just a simplified version on a single qubit but uh, it works on like uh, uh, many qubits several qubits in uh, an ideal algorithm so now uh, we have seen uh, inner product uh, measurement and um, qubit states so we would like to know how, what kind of uh, matrices are used to do this uh, manipulation on these qubit states uh, and uh, do the measurement based on this like inner product that we came we saw so i just want to stop here and uh, just check if uh, things are okay 
I, everybody is able to follow. Please let me know if there is any clarifications. Uh, so uh, I have a question that um, why uh, the transition metrics need needs to be unitary? Is it because uh, the maximum probability uh, will be one? So uh, and the eigenvalues of unitary metrics is one. So is the reason, or is there uh, is there any other reason that um, the metrics should be unitary? Okay, so uh, that, that's a very good question. Actually, if you see, if we um, look into quantum systems and uh, we know that uh, they are probabilistic in nature and uh, if we measure them, they're going to be in different states. We know that they're going to be in several states, which is like superposition of states. And uh, at the end of the measurement, they will collapse. The wave function will collapse to one of the states, which means it will collapse in certain to a certain extent that its probability is uh, given by its uh, amplitude square, which is the coefficient square. And if you if you see uh, for a state as, such as alpha zero, alpha kid zero plus beta. Okay, let's see. Let's can we can take this also. Uh, alpha alpha kid zero plus beta. Beta is root two by root two uh, root three one. Uh, then, if you sum, if you do the same thing, uh, then you get the probability to be one by three and two by three which means uh, they have to add up to one, which means if you are either going to get one third of the time, so you do thousand times these measurements, one third of the times we are going to get uh, zero and two third of the times we are going to get one. That's the interpretation, right? And if we sum it up, you are always going to get one. And this is the norm of the uh, quantum state or the vector or the wave function. And therefore, the uh the uh, the the evolution that captures such a uh the, the matrix that captures such an evolution of a quantum system has to uh, has to uh, satisfy this criteria that the norm is preserved throughout at any point in time so like you make uh, at 500th or 339th measurement at, at any measurement at any uh, number of the measurement it should not violate the uh, probability so yes first thing you mentioned it's because of this probability that it will be one they have to be unitary and they they evolve the quantum system naturally evolve unitarily see here they, the norm, they, they evolve unitarily unitarity ensures that the norm is preserved so this is how it is but this is the case with single qubit but if, when it comes to several uh, several uh, basis states which are in superpositions still the uh, concept is valid thank you sir that's beautifully explained uh sir one more question of me is that qubit is the linear combination of uh, the classical bits right uh, so basically it is a generalization of uh, the classical bits so we can if we uh, take the coefficient uh, uh, zero, then we will get again the classical bit. So we can convert the quantum computers into uh, the classical computers by uh, taking those uh, coefficient um, zero respectively. So uh, is it uh, possible or I am thinking in wrong way? Okay, I'm, I'm not sure I get the question properly. Uh, so uh, now you have to go to, uh, uh, to a place, a regime where you can get you can have alpha and beta uh, or get zero and get one in the superposition of states and in classical computer we are never going to have such a state is that right you will either have zero or one it's exclusivity it has to be either zero or it has to be one we can never have uh, true and false in uh, both in uh, classical thing on and off state we are never going to have that we are going to only have uh, either 5 millivolt or 0 millivolt, which is like, again, uh, of course, with the error thing. Uh, but it's going to be 0 or 1. As long as we are in the classical thing, we are never going to get that uh, uh, feature. But when we go to the quantum, we are going to have this feature. And that is not going to remain there forever. Because we are going to do measurements to extract 
uh, we let the comp uh, qubit or the quantum system evolve and uh, we also uh, do ex externally manipulate uh, by using quantum gates uh, and then we do, and thus we do the computation and finally we want to extract the information when we want to extract the information we are going to measure it just like the projection thing uh, it's it's basically a projection mathematically it's a projection and then when we do it it's either going to be uh, it, it's going to collapse to one of the states which is going to be like a, a classical thing in terms of a single qubit here and uh, where exactly we want to say that uh, can it uh, or classical thing can remain quantum oh, yeah. so i did not get that part uh, sir what i mean to say that uh, qubit is the linear combination of the two classical bit alpha into zero plus uh, beta into one. So okay. if we take beta, then we will get zero uh, classical bit. Uh, beta. If we take beta equals to zero, then we uh, get the uh, first okay. classical bit, and okay. we when we in the next step we uh, take alpha zero, then uh, and beta equal to one, then we get uh, the second classical bit. So how so, do we? Yeah, but again, so this is in the length scale of quantum. There, uh, you, I mean, that you're going, you're saying take right, which means you're going to measure, and the measurement outcome is going to be probabilistic. Again, uh, so th it's not going to be like, uh, yeah, we can manipulate, uh, we can um, bring it in such a state that we get uh, seventy-five percentage of it to be zero and uh, twenty-five percentage of it to be uh, uh, one time. But again, it will. So I'm not sure if I'm able to get the question. So it, it, I am not sure if that answered also. But yeah, OK, maybe we'll have this discussion later. Because I need to understand the question, but I, I don't think I haven't understood the question properly yet. I'm sorry, sir. I That's couldn't okay. explain. So uh, one last uh, query is mine. Uh, I am a PhD scholar of mathematics. Uh, and uh, the topic of my research is quantum random walk on graph. Right. So currently what I'm studying is totally theoretical things and what I'm doing is totally, totally theoretical things. And uh, I, I read in the literature that it can be a uh, useful uh, to the quantum computing. What we are doing is we are searching a graph in which uh, there will be perfect state transfer between the two nodes two vertices and we also uh, compute the uh, continuous time quantum walk by the uh, solution of the Schrodinger equation. So um, if I want to implement that theory in the quantum computer, so uh, I don't know how to do that. So uh, where from where I can he take help if whether what I'm doing theoretically can be a uh, useful practically. OK. So, uh, yes, yes, definitely. It is, uh, I think it, it's being pursued also, just like you. So there is a, there is a way to solve this. Uh, so as I mentioned about, uh, earlier I mentioned about something called answers. So we have a problem statement. You want to find a graph. Uh, you probably found a graph and you want to maximize or minimize it uh, to put it into proper use something like that right so then uh, this is going to involve some kind of uh, algorithm and uh, which means uh, i mean it, it's going to involve some kind of objective function and then you're going to maximize it or minimize it based on what you want and you can use either gate based or annealing based quantum computer to do this so first thing you probably have to build a graph uh, based on uh, your problem statement that the, the graph comes from the problem statement and then um, we, you, then again, the part of the problem statement gives you the objective function. You'll have to derive at an objective function, and then um, the constraints or whatever that is required uh, in order to do the in order to do the uh, procedure, which is optimization. And then uh, this can be done. This can be done both classically. At this, uh, from this point, you can branch out to classical or quantum. And in order to go to quantum, uh, we have to do certain kind of manipulation of the uh, things that we have, uh, such as objective function and uh, uh, the constraints and everything. Uh, so that 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 is a uh, like a research topic that's being uh, pursued now. So I think 
yes it is doable and it's been done also probably we can have this discussion also after this like how it's being done and if you have some specific problem we can also uh, take a look at that but it, sure. it is doable it's just not theoretical it is definitely doable okay thank you so much sir. thank you okay so now i'll move on now uh, uh, now we'll uh, introduce uh, that there are uh, like single qubit gates and two qubit gates that we'll be looking into initially i'll discuss uh, single qubit gate so again uh, this is just a, this, a gate uh, this is a unitary gate again uh, that uh, acts on a single qubit which is like alpha get 0 plus beta get 1 and uh, so i've just written it to show that it's a gate that is an operator like we come across these terms so many so it shouldn't uh, bother us so it should be it's a gate a quantum gate uh, uh, an operator which is a unitary matrix and yeah so just uh, covered all the try to cover all the terminologies here that can act on a single qubit side and transform or rotate it or manipulate it so yes so now uh, before going to the quantum gate i just want to share a uh, of course, we all know uh, this classical not gate. So it takes uh, true and uh, converts into to false, or takes false and converts it into true. So on into off, off into on, and all that. So something similar is also available in uh, quantum gates, but there are more to quantum gates. We'll, we'll see that one by one. So quantum not gate or bit flip uh, or poly X gate. This is the first gate that we'll see. It's a rotation about X axis. So this is the X axis that we have. And it's going to rotate like this or like this. Uh, the matrix is going to do this rotation. So uh, this is the matrix form of this poly X gate. And it's called a bit flip gate for a reason you'll see now. And this is a direct way of representing the uh, poly X gate. And now if we we will just see what is the effect of poly gate on the uh, get zero state. So 0, 1, 1, 0. And we have the zero state. 1, 0, and it's a 2 way 2 matrix. So yeah, this is uh, fine to go. And we, we are going to get uh, uh, 2 into 1. So 2 into 1 matrix state here. So 0 into 1 plus uh, 1 into 0, 1 into 0, and 1 into 1 into one plus 0 into 0. So we at the end of the thing, we get 0, 1, which is as 1 state. And if we do the same uh, computation here for a poly x when it operates on a get one state it's going to give us a zero state so this is the bit flip so we are going to uh, from the uh, classical uh, point of view uh, it's just a uh, it, it consider this as a bit and uh, so there, this is going to be flipped to one and this one is going to be flipped to zero so this is the effect of poly gate poly x gate on the uh, zero and one and uh, so in the product we have discussed and this is the uh, this is the matrix way of doing it i also just wanted to show how to do it using uh, dirac notation sometimes this is this comes handy uh, so this is also interesting to see so 0 1 and 1 0 this is again uh, uh, something called outer product this gives uh, uh, this gives us a freedom to build uh, quantum gates so I'll just uh, quickly show how to do uh, using Dirac notation. So sigma x on uh, zero state. So zero one plus one zero. We have this zero state, and we are going to bring that inside. So this is linear. So quantum mechanics is linear, so no problem. We can comfortably bring inside, and then um, zero one zero, and then similarly one bracket zero zero. And you see, this is this won't survive because their inner product is going to be zero, and this will survive, and we get the get one state. So the get zero has been transformed to get one state using the Dirac notation. And then, um, again, for something similar for get one, this will be transformed into zero state. So this is using Dirac notation. Also, uh, if you if you're free, sometime you just want to practice, you can try this sigma x when poly x operator works on uh, this plus state and poly x works on this minus t uh, plus state goes by one by square root two one one and minus state goes by one by square root two minus one one this is just for uh, getting uh, um, uh, algebraic practice so then 
uh, let's uh, now we have done this uh, x rotation so of course there's going to be y and z rotation let's look at the z rotation now based uh, uh, the rotation or manipulation about the z axis and this is the matrix form for uh, the z uh, poly z gate 1 0 0 minus 1 and this is the direct notation form for the poly z gate and let us see if uh, what happens uh, when the poly z acts on the plus gate so if we see here uh, 1 0 0 minus 1 and 1 by root 2 this is the plus state and we do the algebra we get 1 into uh, 1 1 into 0 and plus 0 I think I've done something wrong here. Let me just check. Okay. So this is supposed to be 1 here. And then, uh, so 1 into, this is 1. 1 into 1 plus 0 into 1. Uh, 0 into 1 plus uh, minus 1 into 1. So we get uh, 1 by root 2, 1 minus 1, which is same as my negative state. Uh, minus 10. Same thing can be done with uh, when z acts on minus state, it uh, changes to plus state. So direct notation for uh, plus and minus state. So this is the direct notation for plus state. 0, uh, get 0 plus get 1 by root 2. For minus state, z, get 0 minus get 1 by root 2. And we can do something similar, just like what we did for poly, z, uh, poly x gate. We can use the direct notation way of doing uh, the manipulation can be done like this so and I just wanted to that's and that's another uh, concern you can get uh, what happens when policy acts on minus uh, state using direct notation and also uh, the matrix form of training and uh, another so this poly z gate is uh, considered to be uh, a face face uh, gate. So it's like a, it it puts uh, plus into minus and minus into plus, so which means uh, there is a, uh, there is a phase that is going to be involved in when it comes to uh, when the qubit. Uh, if you if you see the qubit representation, this e to the i power e to e to e power i phi takes care of the relative phase, and this phase will be manipulated when we do the z gate so it like puts uh, plus into minus and minus into plus and uh, poly y gate it's a it's another interesting gate because it takes care of both uh, face and bit flip so it changes the not only changes the bit uh, just like x gate it also does the face change also to uh, gives the face change to the qubit so and it's a rotation around y axis and this is another way of doing poly gate so i into sigma x sigma z this is the poly x and poly z gate so again now uh, i'll not just uh, demo this uh, poly y gate things but you can work it out on your own so that's one interesting prop there is a uh, many interesting property for this uh, x y z poly gates these are poly matrices or poly gates they uh, they are really important one of them uh, is uh, we square them or uh, do uh, successive poly uh, x or poly y or poly z we end up getting uh, identity matrix there is also another uh, there are also other import, important concepts such as uh, commutate uh, commutator and anti commutator for these uh, poly matrices and uh, they are highly re relevant in uh, different algorithms but we will not uh, discuss about that now um, but this is a good place to try uh, what happens if we apply the y gate on different states so now as you can see there is a bit flip y applied on zero will give a bit flip plus i so there is a uh, change in the phase and applied on one there's a change in the phase and again uh, the bit is flipped okay another very important gate this is like uh, this is the uh, most important gate in in fact so hadamard gate i'm sure you have come across this hadamard gate 
this Hadamard gate is a gate that creates a superposition of uh, in, for a for a qubit. The, that puts a quantum state into a qubit state. So let us say we start with a zero state or a one state, and uh, we are going to need to uh, harness the power of quantum parallelism, and uh, that can be achieved only by applying Hadamard gate. Hadamard gate is the one that puts any qubit in the any any quantum system into a superposition of equal superposition of states and uh, this Hadamard gate is uh, given by uh, this uh, matrix and this is the Dirac notation form of it so it's it's uh, partly a rotation around the y-axis and uh, 180 degree rotation about the x-axis let's see what happens to zero state uh, we start with uh, zero state on top of the um, z in the block sphere and what happens to that uh, so this is the matrix and uh, so we have two into two and two into one and we're going to get a two into one matrix so if we do the manipulation we end up getting plus state which is just here so we have we start with this state and we arrive at this state so this this plane sure i've done the stuff my block sphere here but uh, so this this if you if you can imagine this plane that's a plane for uh, superposition of states with different coefficients of course so this is the equal superposition of states so it can be zero or one 50 50 percentage each and something similar uh, it's an, it's in the opposite side of the x which is negative x so we can get zero minus one by root two when we apply Hadamard gate on the plus uh, one state get one state so this is like a, this is a very important state as you can understand because we are going to uh, see if you see here we are going to input uh, in in classical computer this is this is what quantum parallelism is all about so in classical computer we have either zero or one and if we are going to in if we are going to in, if we are going to input uh, all these bits they go one after the other into the uh, whatever the solver but here if we prepare we are able to prepare a state which is in equal superposition such as this plus state and minus state and we have we we can uh, send this state this is a state by itself right and we can send this uh, to the solver or the algorithm or the oracle in one shot instead of going one after the other so bit one and bit two is already sent as one bit alone here so that's the that's the idea of quantum parallelism this is basically the superposition of states this superposition of states that we uh, are able to achieve is because of the Hadamard gate so it's a very important gate in quantum computing so now another important uh, thing so far we have seen about uh, single qubit gates so we also can we, we definitely use uh, multi qubit gates in uh, our uh, usual calculations so it was more than definitely more than one qubit so before going to understanding how um, the two qubits interact just wanted to share uh, something called tensor product and the tensor product what it does is it just uh, scales exponentially scales the uh, Hilbert space uh, for that many number of qubits. So this is the how the tensor product works. A B C D. This is the, the tensor symbol, and M one M one N one the dimensions and M two N two. We we have to do the tensor product in this manner. A A times C D and B times C D, and we'll end up A C A D and B C B D. So this it's the it dimension scales like this, and this is how uh, we get. Uh, uh, two to the power n states. So, for example, okay, I'll come to that. So, in case, um, uh, in case um, we want to scale the, we have a qubit in zero state, second qubit in the another qubit in the kit zero state, and we are going to see how it's going to interact, and what could be its uh, wave function, and this is how it will scale, and it's going to have four basis states, and uh, one zero and one zero tensor. So one zero one zero zero one zero will get this state, and this is as uh, it, it, this is same as zero zero state. So this and this are same, uh, except for this uh, 
tensor being dropped here. So this is a like for uh, to write in order to write uh, faster. So this is and uh, we have uh, four such states. We'll have four such states uh, for two qubit system, right? So for three qubit system, uh, we'll have eight such states. So you can try this uh, for yourself. And uh, so that is another important aspect. So of uh, quantum states here, we have num we have a single qubit that can have two basis vectors, and these basis vectors can be zero, one, and uh, it goes like two power one, two, and we have two qubits, and the number of basis vector would be four. So these are the basis vectors, and they are all they all can be uh, put in equal superposition of states. So that's another. That's the, the I mean the one the Hadamard gate the, the gate Hadamard gate that we saw uh, can put all these states in equal superposition of states, and similarly for three qubit and so on and so forth. So this is this exponential scaling. So whenever we come across uh, quantum computers or quantum algorithms can provide exponential speed up. See this exponential this this exponential it, it grows exponentially. This exponent Initial uh, nature of uh, scaling or uh, the qubits or the bits can be fed into the quantum computer uh, using this Hadamard gate. In, in can be prepared. These quantum systems can be prepared uh, and fed into the uh, oracle in one single shot. So that's that's exactly what means quantum uh, quantum algorithm. When someone says quantum algorithm is expected to give exponential speed up, and of course. Depending on the problem statement, it can be uh, it, it can be around uh, polynomial or whatever nature. But this is essentially it, it, the exponential speed up nature. So, and uh, so in through tensor product, uh, we get this scaling and uh, multipartite uh, system uh, that is present in this Hilbert space. So, okay, before going to the second uh, double uh, two qubit gate. I just want to check if uh, this idea of bipartite system, the tensor product, and the scaling, and the exponential speed up, is all okay with you. Sir, uh, I guess Arpita has a doubt. Uh, if you can show us the rotations and how it has happened on the phase gates. Uh, you mean uh, on the uh, IBM. Uh, I guess yes. Uh, I, okay. Okay, we can do that. Um, but can I finish this? Uh, just uh, I think, uh, there's a couple of more slides. I'll finish this quickly. This is also another important gate. This is a. Uh, this is another very important gate. So I'll finish this and I'll show that. Is that okay? Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay. Then I'll move on. So we know this um, classical XOR gate, uh, and it goes like this. We have two inputs, and we get single output, and it is given by this uh, uh, X uh, addition modulo Y. And uh, so the striking feature is the classical computation or the classical logic gates that we come across is irreversible, from which means from the output that we achieve, we, we, we are not in a position to understand the input. So we are left with, uh, like, if we get one, we cannot decide we got uh, the uh, zero we got one from zero one or one zero so that's the that's another problem with uh, classical computation uh, however uh, i just wanted to show this classical xor gate uh, to just get familiarized with this uh, gate uh, but quantum theory being based on uh, unitary evolution uh, quantum computing that we do is uh, uh, within the unitary regime so and uh, we are going to use quantum computer uh, unitary matrices or operators to do the calculation it will it we can uh, because uh, it, it is reversible because we know that uh, u inverse is uh, u dagger so this this gives a, a big advantage for uh, reversibility and this is another uh, this is a single uh, two qubit gate called uh, controlled not gate this is again a bit flip based on the controlled qubit. So therefore, the control not uh, name. This is the matrix form. This is the Dirac form. And uh, so C0, uh, the idea is to 
uh, flip the second qubit based on uh, whether the first qubit is uh, 0 or 1. If the first qubit uh, is 1, the second qubit gets flipped. Uh, second qubit's width gets flipped. Uh, if, the, uh, if, it's, if it's 0, the first qubit is 0, the second qubit bit doesn't get flipped. So if we do this uh, algebra, we'll know that. Uh, in this case, 0, 0. We start up with 1. Uh, triple zero here is the representation and when we do c naught because the first qubit or the control qubit is zeroth state the second qubit does not get affected after this algebra we'll get this there is no change but it's a uh, and something similar can be done using the dirac notation there is uh, no change you'll end up getting same result so what if the control qubit the first qubit is in uh, one state and what happens to the second qubit so we'll try to do that this is for one and zero state. We do the uh, manipulation. We see that uh, one, uh, with, with the one we start with zero, zero, one, zero gets changed into zero, zero, one, uh, zero, one, which is uh, same as C naught one, zero is equal to one, one. So the truth table for that is like this. So this is the input and the output. And the first qubit is the control qubit. This is the target qubit. And uh, it's zero, 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 zero. There is no change. And uh, the first qubit is 0, second qubit is 1, still no change. First qubit is 1, second qubit is 0. The second qubit gets flipped into 1. And then the first qubit is 1, second qubit is in 1. The first qubit remains the same. Second qubit gets flipped into 0. And from these results, we can always identify uh, what, what the input was. And this gives us the idea of uh, freedom for reversibility. So the circuit for, uh, if you can try this. Uh, manipulation uh, using both Dirac and uh, in the previous slide we have Dirac and also the matrix representation. So we, this is the circuit. So this is zero, uh, zero qubit and this is the first qubit. And uh, this is in the X state and this is in the Y state. What we obtain uh, here is, uh, this is a, a symbol for control naught. This is the, this is the control qubit. Q naught is the control qubit and Q1 is the uh, target qubit. So this is the bit flip uh, uh, symbol here, not symbol. And we get uh, in the first qubit the same as uh, it goes unaffected. But the second qubit, uh, the XOR happens. And the XOR depends on whether the, of course, we know that from classical thing, whether uh, one or not. And therefore, this control not, uh, it gives us a lot of uh, uh, freedom to do computation in classical, in quantum thing. So I'll just quickly uh briefly capture the essence of both classical and quantum that we do so in classical world we have bits zero one and in quantum world we have qubits which is not zero one but uh, of some coefficient alpha zero there's uh, beta one where alpha and beta are complex coefficients and therefore they are probabilistic as classical is deterministic can be either which means it has to be either zero or one or two or false or on or off but in quantum, it's the probabilistic inter interpretation. It's going to be like alpha modulus alpha square or modulus beta square. And in classical uh, uh, computing, we follow uh, logic gates based on Boolean algebra, and it is ir irreversible. In quantum computing, we follow linear algebra based on uh, uh, unitary gates or unitary operators uh, based on linear algebra, and uh, the computation is reversible. So, thank you. Any other questions before we see some kind of a demo? Okay. That is no questions. Uh, so I have a question that uh, um, in the quantum computing, uh, linear algebra is, has so much contribution in it. It's like they are very really soulfully connected. So what's the reason behind uh, this connection that uh, there is so much linear algebra in the quantum okay. computing? OK. Uh, so this linear algebra, so I think uh, it uh, it, come from, it comes from the framework of the uh, linear algebra being able to capture the properties of Hilbert space 
So as you know, the quantum mechanics happens in the Hilbert space. It's, it doesn't happen in the real 3D space that we live in. I mean, uh, in the framework, in the mathematical framework. So the linear algebra is able to do that. Uh, so it's embedded in the, the, the language is linear algebra than anything else. I, I'm not sure about anything else, but linear algebra is definitely the language for uh, quantum computing or quantum mechanics. Of course, the quantum computing in this sense, because we're doing matrix mechanics, matrix quantum mechanics. So it has to be linear algebra. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. OK, so I can share this notebook if you want. But uh, for now, I'll just quickly, I had run a couple of uh, 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 just experiment gates to show how it looks like. So these are things you know already. Uh, I think you know. Uh, so this is uh, this is usually what you get when you log into the IBM Quantum. So okay, uh, do we have time? Can I go on? Uh, I can show the demo also. Yes, sir. Like I think it should take another ten to fifteen minutes. Is that fine? Yes, sir. It is fine. I had uh, opened it. So, have you have you seen this page? Uh, quantum computing So, if you go here, uh, there is two way of doing. Uh, it. One one is this uh, composer, which gives us some graphical uh, information, and the other one is the lab, where we can use uh, use the lab to run the code. So, we'll try to just see both, just in case. So. Now we have this. Uh, see here. Uh, just let me just refresh. So now we have a single qubit, and uh, this is a classical register. We just have one register, and uh, single qubit. Uh, is initial in, uh, initialized in zeroth state as always. Always it will be initialized in the zeroth state. You can see here, this is something uh, something similar to block sphere, but not exactly. And uh, this is supposed to change, but it's not changing. It's coming for two qubits, but it should come for only one qubit. So it's fine now. OK, so now we have, uh, let us see. Let's uh, uh, think about identity gate. I, you know, you all know identity gate does nothing to the uh, the state of the qubit. So we put the identity gate here. You can just drag and drop the identity gate. So it does the calculation. At the end of the calculation, the state will remain in 1, which is like the 100% probability of finding it in 1 because the beta is 0 here and uh, so cool and uh, what about um, if we start if we change the state from zero to one how do we do that we can just apply uh, poly x gate this is the symbol for bit flip and then now this is uh, the system has changed from uh, one zero to zero one this is not getting updated properly so don't mind that so it has come from zero to one state and if we measure that, uh, sorry, if we do the identity gate here, it will be the same. So now, um, let's see uh, another gate. So identity gate. Um, X gate. Okay, X gate is what we saw here. It just changes. Add one more X gate. Puts it back, and likewise, you can understand this. Easy. Yeah, I mean, to be when we are practicing or uh, beginning, it's this. This is really handy, and even other, even otherwise, when we have some doubts, this GUI is really helpful. So we can play around with this. I just wanted to share that. So we we'll do some code here.
This is the block sphere representation. So, so these are Python code. Right, they are, they are in Python. So if we go the launch lab, we get this and we can use a new notebook. Select the kernel. So this is uh, the code I just shared what it is. From this is Cascade Import Quantum Circuit uh, that we are going to use and assemble. And these are the modules that we uh, modules and the libraries that we import. So here is a kind of a simulator. So this is uh, from for, uh, this is in general math, you know, from Cascade visualization. We are getting block vector histogram and all that and we are going to define our simulator based on a simulator and this is uh, to do with identity gates let's do that so we begin uh, we initiate the quantum circuit this is same as this this exactly the same and uh, we are going to do identity of the identity here and that is this line okay and then we are going to draw it So it is the same thing as this. This is the quantum circuit, and this is the same quantum circuit that we see here. And then let's see the results. When we see the results. Uh, we need to, uh, a, a quantum circuit has been defined as QC, and we're going to save the state vector. The state vector is nothing but uh, one zero representation, and we're going to define a Q object uh, based on the, the quantum circuit that we have defined. And this is the uh, this is the code to run the job, and we'll do the once we run the job. The run the job in the sense we are going to measure after measurement. We'll see how the uh, state looks like. So as you already know, uh, we are running uh, we are applying identity gate on zero get uh, state, so there won't be any change, and it turns out to be there is no change. And uh, so. To see the state vector uh, way of doing it, so again the same thing one two zero. So this is a state vector way of doing it, and this is the syntax for that. And also histogram. Uh, what we saw here, uh, this block vector is what we saw here, almost similar, and this state vector is what we saw here. This did not load properly. And we'll see the uh, histogram, which is this. This is the basis state. This is the histogram probability. And it turns out the probability for finding of the zeroth state after identity gate being applied to it remains zero. And it is still one, always one. Let's do for the X gate. Now let us see how to map, how to change it to. We initiate another, I mean, the same circuit. And now we are going to apply x gate on this so this is the index of the qubit and we are going to draw it it's the same thing again to show it's exactly the same thing our circuit should look like look like this i'm not sure why it is it's so slow it's usually not this slow so but yeah this is this is how the circuit is we have flipped uh, zero to one and that's what we see here Okay, I'll just, uh, I'll not wait here. I've done this, uh, yep. so I'll run through this. Again, we'll do the block sphere representation. We see that zeroth state, we started off with zero state and that's been flipped to uh, one state on the block sphere. You can see that. And our uh, state vector representation is uh, one zero. It's not uh, 
uh, zero and this is one so it's like uh, zero zero real plus zero complex so for even for zero it's been uh, decomposed into zero real plus complex so both are zero therefore zero and this is one no imaginary so it's one zero one state which is get one state and uh, if we run the job or we do the measurement we end up getting uh, one state 100 percent and uh, z gate we apply the z gate now same thing uh, we do the z gate on uh, zeroth qubit and uh, this is the state so the z gate when applied on uh, zeroth state it, it goes unaffected because z gate is a rotation along uh, z axis but uh, we have uh, uh, the system already on the z axis so it's like uh, rotating rotating infinite times you won't change anything so it's the same thing and we are getting zero state and we are going to do y gate on the zero and we end up getting uh, going to the uh, uh, one state you can see here so now let's go to the hadamard gate hadamard gate is what we said uh, puts a uh, uh, quantum particle uh, in the superposition of states and if we see this is the hadamard gate and we do this hadamard and uh, the Hadamard gate being applied to uh, get zero state you can see here it goes in equal superposition of states so the amplitude the probability here see it's equally 50 50 percentage and in the block sphere representation it's moved to x uh, x axis and this is the state this is the one by root two uh, probability uh, sorry the amplitude and then uh, if we do the measurement and plot the histogram it will be exactly 50 50 times so this is uh, based on a uh, unitary rotation, a uh, general expression. We have not discussed that. So, yes, uh, I think uh, that's all I have for today now. Thank you. Please feel free to ask any questions now. Sir, a doubt is posted in the chat box. Okay, so it's like this. Uh, we have a state here, and uh, we, it's like uh, we want to bring it to uh, y, uh, this x state. We can use uh, y state to do that. Uh, but what we do is we use the x, we rotation around the x axis, and then we i'm sorry one second i'm a little confused now okay what did i say so this is the rotation that can bring uh, from here to here anyway this tip y rotation right but that alone is not enough because it will not span the whole whole system whole uh, uh what can we call this uh, periphery or the surface so to do that we, we are going to need another axis which is this 180 degree we can have this kind of a rotation y this kind of a rotation y which is span only this particular angle. But if we do this X rotation, this side or this side, we are going to get like any, if it's here, we are going to, we're going to do this X rotation, then we'll end up getting here. So all these states are superposition of superposition states, but they will have different coefficients. Therefore, it's a, it's a rotation based on dependent on X and Y. Any X or Y alone is not enough to get into the, uh, to span the whole uh, uh, the surface of the sphere. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we have seen this. Okay. I think that's, that's all the questions we have.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, participants, if there is any question, you can post on the chat, sir. You can ask here. So, I think we have arrived at the end of the session. So, thank you for your detailed explanation of the qubits and Thank and the gate much. and how they work, sir. It was really interesting. And Thank you. I once again extend my gratitude to Dr. Raghavendra for joining hands with this. And I would also like to thank Dr. Manjula Gandhi ma'am for leading and supporting us. Thank and you. Thank you, Professor Manjula, for giving me this opportunity. And thanks for uh, thanks, Dharni, for uh, kind words. So any any further questions or any interactions we mentioned during the talk? Uh, please feel free to message me. We can uh, get in touch, uh, Discord or anything. So, Sarah is available you. on Discord. You can ping him. So, stay tuned in the Discord for announcements and further updates. And the recorded session of this uh, recorded video of this session will be posted in our Discord session server. So, meet you all tomorrow in the next session by Dr. Shesha Raghunathan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye, you, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you.